Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Feeling Smarter. As always, I'm joined by Tim Miller. G'day, Tim. How are you? Aaron, going pretty well. Nice and warm here in Adelaide today. How are you going? Very well. It's not quite as warm here in Melbourne, but uh, nonetheless, things will be warming up on the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is a focus on superannuation in retirement. So we did see the government bring out a discussion paper late last year on the consultation of retirement uh, and really including SMSFs in it in some respect, even though we do have what I would call a fairly mature retirement phase within uh, SMSFs. Now, Tim, maybe I'll get you to just shed some insights into what that discussion paper is exploring and, and what it might mean for the SMSF industry. Yeah, okay, Aaron. So I guess the, the key is, so they released this uh, superannuation in re retirement paper or discussion paper, Treasury, uh, late last year. And uh, and what they wanted to do was they they really wanted to to look at so they they obviously introduced back in July 2022 this retirement income covenant uh, which applied to APRA funds uh, and they've been reviewing that uh, that the introduction of that since uh, since its introduction back in July 2022 and uh, they really wanted to do a bit of a review and see sort of how's that going and uh, and in light of the objective of superannuation legislation being launched late last year, um, where does this retirement income covenant sit with regard to the objective of super? And uh, and what's interesting, I note, is that uh, the SMSF Association have have recently sort of opened up, uh, in effect, a uh, a discussion group to be able to put submissions in in regards to this discussion paper from Treasury, and uh, and I've put my hand up. To uh, to be involved in it, so uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts about uh, a number of these issues linked to this retirement income covenant. Yeah, well, it's funny as you said, this is something that was fast tracked. It was pretty quick from memory. Um, this one July 2022 rollout, and and in many respects, uh, we did see SMSFs initially included in it, and then by the time we got to uh, bill form, we did see SMSFs excluded. And, and that has really been the lay of the land, you know, is does S, do SMSF need to be involved in this process? Um, and to me, I kind of not sit on the fence, but I think there is some equal positives and negatives to this approach. And I think we are right to be contemplating some of the items of this retirement income coming, because I feel there are some there are some elements here that are absolutely relevant. And we have seen in the literature that comes through from the tax office as regulator, really picking up on those things. So if we go back to what the retirement income covenant was looking to do and, and why ultimately there was a disconnect, the first thing that stood out was the fact that we had an investment strategy covenant and then we'd have a retirement income covenant. And were we going to end up with two lots of documents that were in essence going to tick a few boxes. And we know investment strategies, there are two probably very polar opposite views of um, around how investment strategies work. You've got the financial advisors that rightly see that as a tool to build retirement wealth and the, meet the goals and objectives of the members. And then you've got a cohort that simply want to tick a few boxes so that the auditor says that you've considered all the requirements of Reg 409. So the the problem or the concern raised was, are we going to end up with another set of documents that we need to tick a few boxes on and arguably would create some duplication and confusion around that process? The other part, as I said before, was a timing issue. So could we actually instigate this within, at that time, probably 500-odd thousand funds um, by 1 July 2022? And the short answer was no. Some people would need to get advice. We had an unlicensed accountant framework that predominantly still exists in, with no resolution inside on how that would work. So again, we we're going to get some problems around that particular issue. And then finally, it's the gatekeeper side. So what an auditor is going to have to look at and do and so forth. So it kind of got into the two hard basket. And therefore, the government sort of pulled out um, SMSFs from um, that rug that became law from the 1st of July 2022. The thing that um, the positive aspects of this, though, 
were that it really spoke to the importance, the guidance around retirement planning, um, but also then starting to think of the exit planning measures. And this is why I made the comment about the fact that the ATO has picked up on a lot of this stuff, because as you would know, Tim, when we see the uh, information that the ATO has around starting a fund, one of the things that stands out in that literature is building an exit plan. And, and many of these aspects were actually inside this retirement income covenant. So how are we as uh, trustees going to be dealing with loss of capacity in respect to that trustee member? Um, what steps we're going to put in play to ensure we have enduring powers of attorney in place or dealing with different levels of succession that might occur? And ultimately, what are all those triggers for any potential um, uh, exit strategies that naturally would include the winding up of the fund as well? So to me, whilst these elements get talked about a lot, they don't actually formally form part of any covenant at the moment, which is where that retirement income covenant would actually uh, play a role in my view. Okay, yeah. And, and look, and I think one of the other things that... Uh you know, jumps out at me straight away, having been involved in the industry so long, is that uh, we're also dealing with ultimately a single product uh, environment with self-managed super funds where we exclusively, to a large degree, only have account-based pensions. Um, and uh, and there's, there's clearly a, a bit of a disconnect between, you know, your pension requirements because the majority of funds do pay the, the, the minimum pension, which then leaves these sort of large legacy amounts, which is which is what the government are ultimately trying to get away from with, with regards to this objective of super, ensuring that people pay down on their retirement benefits um, in, in, in better or, or, or more appropriate formats than uh, the existing account-based system. And, and so perhaps that's another reason why it jumped into that too hard basket and something that we need to look at is what other products are viable in the, in the superannuation space. Yeah, and the other thing for me, and certainly we've got a government that appears to have an appetite for setting up um, legislation that accommodates for SMSF separate from APRA funds. I'm yep. referencing the NALI and NALI provisions there. Um, but if if we are going to see, and if it's going to be a, a serious discussion around this retirement income covenant, well, then maybe what we need to do is, from an SMSF context, look at the investment strategy requirements as well that sit within Reg 409 and think about, well, where, will those, where are those overlaps? what things are not relevant to SMSFs in there and come up with something that is far more meaningful to the fund um, because there are things within the investment strategy framework anyway that uh, we know are a current gap, like the fact that we don't need to have a documented investment strategy. That would be one very simple thing that they could tidy up as part of this process. So you know, I think if we're going to go down this path, there there is a slightly broader context in the way that we could do it so that we don't end up in this situation where we're just creating a document for the sake of creating a document. We actually have a document within the SMSF um, retirement phase member space that is actually meaningful for them and leads to dealing with not only their retirement planning, but what they might need to do from a succession and exit point as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. Well, that is it for this week. Uh, Tim, this is going to be something, of course, that we're going to be talking about uh, as part of our state of SMSFs. This is naturally one of many areas across the SMSF industry that we expect to play quite a significant role in 2024. We have already, I think, over 500 registrations for this event. So they are going very strong. If you haven't registered for it yet, make sure that you do. Go on to our Smarter SMSF website, go to the upcoming events, and you can register for this upcoming free CPD event. Once again, Tim, thanks for your time. Always a pleasure, Aaron. Look forward to catching up next week. Will do. Have a great rest of the week. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Yes.